Today is the 29th of February. And first question from Roger. What do you think about optimizing the subdomain with a search phrase? And through one, redirecting it to your main money site. Um, I've played around with it. I mean, I haven't seen much with it. I try not to talk too much about redirects just because they can be, um, a little confusing. I mean, they can, they can mess up optimization and all that. The only time I really threw a one is in a case where, you know, uh, maybe, a am um, tr- trademarking a term. Like I'm ranking for an affiliate term. They tell me I can't have the trademark in the domain. I'll change the domain to something similar and then 301 it over to a new site. And that's really the only time I really use 301s. Or if I move a page, you know, to change the URL. Other than that, I don't mess with it too much. Can you talk about proxies? Is it recommended that we use different ones when setting out and posting the PBNs? Nope. You don't got to worry about proxies for any of that. You're welcome, Elizabeth. I, I just post in uh, Internet Explorer. That's it. I don't use proxies or any of that. I feel like I finally understand enough to start implementing what I've learned. My week is completely open for me to work on my money site, so my plan is to map out my site today. I have content tomorrow. Build out social profiles the next day. Build out citations the next. And finish the week with scheduling a baby amount of traffic from crowd search. Do you think this plan is too aggressive? No. I think that is a good plan, Wendy. Just get moving. That's the most important thing. You got it, Brendan. No problem. Now, a question from Brendan. I'm having problems determining how easy or hard a keyword is to rank for. Would you please share with us how you determine how easy or hard a keyword is to rank for? For example, if the Moz difficulty score is X to top 10 money sites, then you know it's going to take a lot of work. Or is DA and PA more important to you in evaluating the level of competition? For example, if the top five sites have a combined DA and PA of less than 30 each, then you know you could own the niche easily. All right, so a lot of determining difficulty comes down to experience, but also kind of common sense. You know, how how many people are searching for the keyword and then just kind of looking at the at the people who are at the top. So if you type in something like, you know, cheap car insurance, I know this is a, a difficult keyword because I've gone after it before. Now, you got the top result as an EMD, and what you want to do is you can run these people through, like, Ahrefs. And, you know, if you don't know, you, st- you start seeing how many links they have, right? So you've got almost 16,000 links from over, from almost 1,700 domains. That is a ton of links. All right, so the next thing you would do is look at his anchor text, and he's an EMD, which means, I mean, EMDs are extremely powerful. And then look how much anchor text he has for cheap car insurance, right? And then look how much anchor text he has branded, which also kind of helps him count for cheap car insurance. So he's almost like making Google think he's a brand for cheap car insurance, the way he's done this. Um, and then if we look at the rest of the people on here, you, know, you got Safe Auto, huge site, good to go. Um, I haven't heard of them, but they're probably a big car insurance company. I won't, I'm not going to look them up just to save time. E-Insurance, Liberty Mutual. And these are all people you hear about on Progressive, Mercury. These are all people you hear about on TV and stuff. So obviously, you know, that compared to something like, um, you know, Wilmington, Delaware, Plumber, something like that. It's a, it's a lot more, um, easy to figure out. So. You know, the first one's Yelp. So what you would do is look at it, you know, see if they have any, any links coming in. And then we'll look at, like, one of the sites here. It's number two. This is the easiest way to tell. Grab, like, a real site and then throw them in. All right, so they got 1026 backlinks, 109 domains. Right, let's go take a look at their anchor text. So they got Wilmington DE in there a lot. I uh, think Wilmington DE Plumbing. They got a lot of branded. They got Wilmington in their domain, which I didn't even think about. That's helping them. So that's actually this. From looking at this, they wouldn't be really be easy to take over for that term. They got it in their that Wilmington in their domain name, uh, which is why they're ranking so well for it. And then they actually have a good amount of links. So now I'll check out maybe these guys down here at number seven. This is the last one I'll look at so we don't spend too much time on this. So these guys don't have any keyword. Well, they got plumbing in their domain. 
They don't got any location. They only have 95 links, a lot less. 19 referring domains, so a lot less there. Anchors, let's go check that out. All right, it's just pretty much branded. They got some Wilmington in here. So these guys probably wouldn't be as hard to beat. So, like, a term like this, I'm thinking, you know, getting to, like, number seven, you know, getting above these guys wouldn't be hard. But then going up here is going to be a lot more competitive. So you just want to kind of think about, use common sense, how many people search the term. You know, the more people that search it, usually the, the more competition, then go look at the links and the anchor text. And that's kind of how you can get the best idea. There's other things I look at as well, but, you know, like, relevance of links and all that. But, I mean, that's the, the first things that I look at. So being signed into your YouTube account and leaving comments on other related topics boosts that channel the videos on and video and it up higher. Sort of like the method Joe talks about subscribing and making a related listing on the other hand, right hand side. So I boost with that reason. Well, I'm curious. I would ask Joe about that, Roger. I haven't done that. I haven't messed with that in a while. I know it used to. I'm not sure if it still does. What's up, Chris? Joe does a lot more video stuff than me. Would you be able to walk through the changes to the 10 anchors from the Synchros one too and how you would explicitly change that? I'm going to do a, a video on that this week, Greg. Uh, we'll have the URL with spaces between the keyword effect the ranking, for example. Um, I mean, I've never really tested it, Roger, but I imagine it might affect it a very little bit. But for the most part, no. I mean, you still got your the same thing in there, just a dash. So it might affect it a very little bit, but not much. I have a problem never seen before and do not know what to do. I have a site used to be in Drupal on one server. We rebuilt the site in WordPress and moved it to one of my resellers. But there are still thousands of spam links showing up when I do site. What can I do to fix this? I, that's more of a technical problem, Scott, which I don't, I don't know much about. Um, and I mean, those could just be from, um, j just, they aren't, they haven't been removed from the index yet, but they're really not there still. I would have someone more technical look at the site if it were me. I would just kind of hire them, say, look, you know, make sure it's not hacked or anything still and make sure these aren't there. I create fake personas for my PBNs with socials as well. Would it hurt to link back to my branded money site and a comment naked URL, of course, even go as far as embedding? No, I mean, it's, it's not going to hurt it, no. When you send traffic through high DA sites, for example, Facebook, Twitter, how much traffic are you sending a month? Uh, 50 visitors per DA site, 2,500. Usually I start pretty low, Greg. Um, maybe like 30 a month, something like that. Average of one a day, something, something like that. I mean, I'll switch it up. Still testing with all that, though. Did I hear you correctly last week when I think you stated that even though you have all of your PBNs pointing to your money on different IPs, you have all the same who is info for each your PBN domain names? I mean, they're privacy protected. But no, I mean, I don't, I don't have names in there, but they're, I mean, they are, they do have privacy. Do you send traffic through your PBNs? Can you give a range for how much traffic per PBN? I'm testing with it still, Greg. Again, I start with low amounts. When building out a new affiliate site, what social channels do you build? Uh, just Facebook and Twitter, or as many as possible, like Instagram, LinkedIn, Google+. Plus. My, just wondering if I'm overdoing it by getting 100 listings on biz directories. Um, I mean, sometimes I don't build out any, but if I do, I might do like 50 or so, like top 50. I mean, you can do more. It's not going to hurt you. So I wouldn't say you're overdoing it. If we recover a site from Wayback Machine, the site is not a WordPress site. Do we need to know HTML to add an article to it? Um, I mean, I usually just go in and add and edit the index.html file. I just put the link on the home page. Or where I find the page I want to put the link on, just edit what they currently have. I'll just add a little bit to, you know, the content and then just put it in. That's it. 
You got to know very little HTML to add it in. All you got to know is the uh, how to add a link with HTML. That's it. Do you know why my Yelp is ranking number one for brand name showing for the photo section instead of the main business page? My guess would be my title of the picture boosted that image to the top. I don't know. I might, I may have to see the example, Roger. Steven does a lot with that too, so you could ask him, but I probably need to see it to, to compare the two and know exactly what you did. I have a website that simply won't move from the sixth or seventh page. I've only built two BBN links to the website, so I'm not expecting it to move up to the first page, but figured for local SEO, it would at least be on the third or fourth page by now. Do you have any suggestions? It depends on how long ago you linked to it and how competitive and what anchor text you used and how it's optimized. So I would need to know all those things before you know, suggesting on what to do. And there was more to that question, so you can grab the site. Uh, VIPTattooRemoval.com. And this site has a lot more than uh, two PBNs pointing to it. I mean, I don't know what other type of linking you did. I mean, the only keyword I would expect you to rank anywhere for is VIP tattoo removal, uh, which is the name of the brand. I mean, other than that, you don't have any keywords in here. You, know, you got this one, but that's a that's a no follow link. That's not that's not a do follow link. I don't know if your your PBNs aren't showing or not uh, in there, but yeah, it's, I mean your number three for that, which I would expect, you know, with this anchor text. Uh, I mean, you're kind of branding yourself towards that. But, I mean, it depends on what, you know, what keywords you're going after when you did the links, um, all that stuff. So you're probably going after tattoo removal in Las Vegas, I'm guessing. It depends on your anchor text, when you did the links, quality of the sites, depends on a lot of stuff. All right, how important is it to find PBNs that are the same topic or in a majestic as your money site? Or do you just look at TF and CF and never care about topics? Yeah, I don't really look at topics, Stephen. I mean, if they're on the same topic, yeah, that's definitely good. But a lot of times, I mean, it's just really hard to find sites on the same topic with good metrics. When you're getting option domains, do you avoid them if only subpages are indexed? Uh, I mean... You don't, you don't really know if they're indexed or not until you get the site up on hosting and, and get some content up. Or if they're going to pass penalty check, that's to say. Um, I mean, I just, Perry, all I do is in, I, I just make sure they're indexed. Anything's indexed. Make sure the links are quality. Anchor text looks good. Has some trust flow. I buy it and I do the penalty check. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if I mean, if any page is indexed, that that sets the tone. And then from there, I just make sure the links look good, the anchor text looks good, have some trust flow that I like, get content up and test it, you know, do the penalty check. But if after I did all of that and only the sub page is showing, I don't know. I mean, I've never had that happen. Would affect me if I keep searching my keywords to check my rankings. What affect me if I keep searching my keywords to check my rank? Because I had this problem where I want to stay and keep searching, see where I'm at throughout the day. Uh, did you ever do this when you first started? What can be some habits? Um, yeah, I mean, just try to try to not do that. It's not doing anything for you. You can spend a lot of time just keep on manually searching for stuff. It's just not going to get you anywhere. So I mean, just try to think like that. 
But I mean, it's not going to hurt you, I don't think. I mean, I mean, I pretty much know because I've done it, but there's just no point to doing it. This is per but I wouldn't worry about hurting your site. This is pertaining to affiliate marketing. In my brand name website, I've hosted a thousand word article on the home page and another uh, seven articles range from 350 to 700 words each on 700 pages. This week, I'm going to execute pillar number two and number four. I set up a Web 2.0 account with WordPress. Then can the same WordPress AC link to all seven articles on my money site and seven different blogs? I mean, yeah, it can. Um, if I selected the main name of my Web 2.0 WordPress blog to be the keyword for each of my article on money site, this is a lot to uh, analyze without saying it, but and dedicate one WordPress blog to three four hours target towards one article on my site. I think you're overthinking this, Jasper. <laughs> just uh, build out the, the Web 2.0 and link to your site. I mean, you're you're definitely just way overthinking that. Now keep it simple. There's a lot there. Even reading that's a lot. I mean, doing it is even more. I mean, I, I never take it to the extent that you're explaining. Just keep it simple. What are the essential things to do to rank in the snack pack? Uh, I mean, that's more a question for any other coach. They do more local. But for me, I've been seeing that a lot of, like, uh, let me show you some old sites. So when you search national SEO, we're number one in the snack pack and whoops, let me go back. And actually this is we're number two as well. So we got one and two. The reason is but the, these sites are both penalized organically. The reason is we did it with old style SEO with a lot of keywords. Um so what I'm noticing is a, a lot of the snack pack, they like exact keywords, like have the exact match. Of course you gotta balance it where you, where you don't get penalized in organic, but one thing you can do is if you don't have a lot of exact match keywords, throw in one. You know what I mean? And I, I've seen big boosts in the snack pack from that. But yeah, I mean, I have cases like this all over the place where I have sites that have heavy keyword anchor text that are ranking great in the snack pack, of course, or are penalized organically. But you got to find that meeting. You don't just want to be in the snack pack. But that's that's one tip I can give on it. Uh, top five mistakes you made when you first started in client SEO. Um. <laughs> I don't know if I have a top five. I don't, I don't even, I don't even remember mistakes I made. I mean, just do your best. I wouldn't worry about making mistakes. Just kind of do your best and just keep moving forward. That's all. Where do you get your guest post? Uh, the hop.com? No, um, all different places, Brendan. I've, I haven't used the hop in a while. Um, I'll have to, you know, maybe I'll check them out again, see how they are. How valuable is it to point your PBNs to your NAP Verify Web 2.0s as opposed to linking them directly to your money site? So linking them to your Web 2.0s is just the safer way to go. Um, it's, it's a way to build trust to your site. But you're not going to see as much movement doing that. You're always going to, see, going to see more movement pointing a PBN directly to your money site, but that's also more dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't catch a footprint, and it's one of the first links you send, you know, it could get you penalized and just... I just want people to do to web 2.0s and socials first as they're first starting out, and then you can kind of move to the directly to the money site once you get comfortable. Uh, who is your mentor that started you out in SEO? How did you come across SEO? Um, I mean, I found Mike Long's course a while ago. I kind of, I mean, I just went through his course and just kind of did a, a, a whole bunch of testing. That's all. So I had you know basic information on it, and then I just started putting up sites and. And just moving forward, that's it. Put up sites, put up sites, put up sites. Instead of thinking about how it works, put them up, see how it works, you know. Video embeds for high authority PBNs, web two point zero and posting to multiple of these don't doesn't that cause any issues or you can right away go and take a day for just embedding your videos on all these properties and having your sub hooks. I don't do a ton of video embedding, I do mostly linking. Um I mean, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by posting to multiple of these. You'd have to give me a more clear example there. Do you use NetPeak Checker? I do not. Yeah, I don't use that, Faisal. 
If I have PBM1 and PBM2 hosted on GoDaddy, can I move PBM1 to HostGator hosting and point it to the same site as PBM2 without an issue? They've been on the same host for a couple months. You, sh- you shouldn't have a problem with that, Perry. I've done it before and I had no problems. When you say silo site, is there an application that does this or do you just mean the way you organize the site? Yeah, I mean, it's the way you organize the site, Dan. I wouldn't worry too much about siloing, honestly. It's not super important. Uh, it's something I used to put a lot of focus on until I saw that it really didn't give me too much of an edge, if any at all. So in certain cases, I will still, but uh, for the most part, I wouldn't worry about that. Safari, okay, okay instead of Internet Explorer for posting, yes. I mean, as long as you're not signed into Google, that's, that's the only thing I worry about. What's up, Jamari? Uh, thoughts on launch.com? You had success with those in your experience? Could a newbie like me pull that off? I just started. Yeah, I mean, launch.com can be great. The thing about launch docking now, especially the you know the way the search engines are working much slower, is to get on the launch jack ASAP, like right away. As soon as it gets announced, register your domain name, get content up as fast as you can, and go with an EMD. That's the way to launch jack right now. Can you hide inbound links from the PBN when I search congram.com using Stream and Frog? Does not show me any links from PBNs. If you own the PBNs, you can hide them. Yes. What do you use proxies for? Do you log into Google using multiple accounts? No. Um, I use proxies just when I'm checking, when I'm doing like scrape box stuff. If I'm doing like a bulk index check on PBNs or something like that, in that case, I'm using proxies. Other than that, I do not use them. Right, check a site in Ahrefs. It's newer. Uh, LovePoloClothing.com, and it stated and it stated site is an index. Visitor told me the site was put up again on 2:14. When I checked Google, the site does look does look indexed. How do I know if it's the older one or the new or the one they just put up? The metrics in Ahrefs do not give me a lot to go on. I mean, you don't worry about if it's the old one or the new one. You just worry that it is indexed. And it's indexed. I mean, the site's indexed. That's all that matters. You could check if it's penalized. Oops. And it's not penalized either. Although the, that's... So it's still showing that the, the website is parked when I do that, which means it's it probably hasn't indexed, for, fully indexed the new new version yet. But, I mean, the site's fine. It's not penalized. Uh, it's just, it just might take text, uh, time to index a new version. How do you get backlinks from high DA sites like CNN, Wikipedia, New, new York Times, etc.? Uh, people offer services like that, Faisal. Like Derek Wozniak offers that. How do we beat out the Yelp, BB, Angie's List, et cetera, ranking for local keyword services, just like we teach, Ken? I mean, just that better optimization. Um, and that's it. I mean, we, we beat those people out all the time. Yelp, BBB, Angie's List. They're definitely, I mean, they're nowhere near unbeatable. I've been using PBN, 16 total keyword anchors for a client site that has over 95% brand anchor text for the last two months. I've moved the 10 top keywords from page 234 to now page 1 and mid-page 2, but the rankings seem to have stalled the last three weeks. Very, very normal, Jason. Should I just keep hitting now with PBNs, or should I try different types of links like Web 2.0? Um, it depends on how competitive. Most likely, let's see, you did for the last two months, yeah. So what I'm noticing, Jason, is a lot of sites will hit, like, top of page two, bottom of page one, and then they'll crawl up the to the first page very slowly. So, I mean, there's a good chance you don't have to hit it with anything, and it'll just move up by itself very slowly over the next few months. But, I mean, if you hit it with more, just be careful not to over-optimize. I mean, it's, it could only help, but just, again, if you're going to do that, don't over-optimize. How do you keep all the plugins and WordPress themes updated on all your different PBN sites and money sites? There's an option in there where you install WordPress, Jason, where you can pick to update all that stuff on its own, I believe. 
But honestly, I wouldn't even worry. I don't even care if they're updated or not. I mean, every once in a while I log in to do a new post or something like that, and I'll just update everything as I log in. But other than that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a pickler for that. Happy Monday. When you're doing your affiliate sites and you're trying to rank for a brand name, for example, your eSigs website, could you give me a few examples of outranking the actual brand when it is already so powerful in the SERPs? Yeah, so most of the time you're not going to outrank the brand, Jess. <laughs> um, I mean, just take e since you did eSigs, we'll take that as an example. You know, some of the top eSigs are Green Smoke. Uh, they're number one for that. Um, V2 SIGs. They're number one for that. Uh, Vapor fee. They're number one for that. So I mean, really, you're probably not going to outrank the brand. Um, you know, they got the EMD, they got the brand, they got the power. But what you what you can do is go after you know these spots down here, and of course number two. So I mean, I wouldn't focus on outranking the brand for their brand name. That's it's going to be pretty tough to do, especially in like the e sig market. I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but it would be extremely, extremely hard. Are maps just up to whatever Google feels like, or is there a way to rank there as well? Maybe I'm missing the training on that, so I thought that I would ask. I mean, maps, Troy, have their own algorithm, uh, Google Maps. It's somewhat similar to, like, to, to organic, but it's just it's a little different. Uh, what I see on my end is it's more... They look more for exact keywords and anchor text and stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, you know, citations, you know, power citations and all that, relevance of citations, stuff like that. I'm using Yoast SEO and unable to edit the meta tag description for a page. Doesn't save after I update. Why would this be happening? Um, I mean, it should update on your site right away, Elizabeth, but it might not update in the search engines right away. That's normal. I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. I have a Twitter with a PA45. Would I link to my money site really help or not at all since Twitter uses redirect links? You know, it would help, but I wouldn't say it would really help. But, I mean, it's going to help a little bit. Where do I go to find a technical person or someone who is expert in Google Webmaster Tools to help me fix this issue? Facebook group. Would you recommend some quality content writers or copywriters for a money site? Everyone I've tried would only be good enough for a PBN. I mean, I use the contentauthority.com. Whoops. So I use these guys. I mean, you have to do some searching. I mean, I've kind of just built my own list of authors uh, that I like. You know, when I order articles and someone does a really good article that I like, I'll keep that writer on, on hand. That's who I use usually. Did you say that you're going to do a video on Anchor Text this week? Yes. No local isn't your main gig, but I'm just wondering if I should be building citations for inner pages that I want to rank for local sites. Yes. I mean, you can double check with Cotton and them, but yeah, yeah, if it was me, yes. How to target multiple cities in different countries for city SEO term? Since Google Webmaster Console will only allow to target one country or none. In different countries? I never tried different countries, Myra, so I, w I wouldn't, I don't have experience with that one there. I've never tried, you know, multiple countries on on the same site. Stephen Floyd would probably be a good one for that, though. He he knows a lot of that that uh, like technical SEO stuff, or like Google rules, I should say. He's very good with that stuff. When researching GoDaddy auctions through Majestic, it seems I'm running into a lot that have referring domains with same IPs, isn't that a deal breaker or are there exceptions? I mean, for me, I don't look a ton of that, Justin. I more look at, you know, quality of links and then the anchor text. And if all that looks good, I mean, it, it's a great chance that it, it's a good site. And that's just what I found. And I look for a lot of branded anchor text and, you know, quality links. Usually when those things match up, everything else is fine. And that's what I've seen. What time frame would you give to a client when look to diff keyword difficulty and analyze, for example, my keyword difficulty 47%? I mean, again, Cotton's better at what, what to tell clients, but for me, 
I would make sure they know that, you know, Google has slowed down. They're going to slowly see improvement, uh, depending on where they currently are. You know, I would, you know, for example, it's a, if it's a new client, new site, I'd say, look, we'll, you know, we'll get you in the top 100, likely, depending on, on competition, within the first three months. Um, you know, next six months, you might jump up to page three, two. Then it might take a whole another six months to jump up to page one. You, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it just depends on keyword difficulty, what kind of domain you have, your resources, and the, and the client. But, I mean, Cotton would be better to ask because he deals with a lot of clients. Would you recommend doing do an anger text with Tetra Removal of Las Vegas at this point to see how it reacts? As long as you don't have anything like that, yes, you can do that, Ken. Are do file links what you need to get credit for the anchor text link? Yes. I'm not saying that no follow uh, gets you no credit at all, but I mean it's absolutely nothing like a do file link. Like if this was a do file link, it would give him a lot more credit for that term than than this no follow. Uh, when linking directly to a money site, is it safe to link by using a site wide link in the sidebar? Or footer, or does the link need to be a contextual? Yeah, I mean, that, you can do that. I just wouldn't do them every link. Yeah, I mean, mixing them in is fine. When using PBMs and link to Web 2.0 citations, do we do it the same way we would for a money site, or can we be a little more aggressive with our anchors? I personally treat it the same way, Kellett. I mean, you can be more aggressive, uh, but for me, I just treat it like a money site. I think long term, that's the uh, safest way to go. My client has a relatively new site and wants to win six main local city keywords for uh, three main cities. Botox, laser hair removal, waxing, med spa, etc. He has 20 social profiles mixed with URLs, with Anchor Text. There's a link from a social media account. Directly, directly listing count towards the Anchor Text ratio, meaning can I start hitting the site with exact keywords now for my PBNs, or would you recommend... My anchor text pattern from my PBNs to money site homepage still be something like URL brand. Yeah, I mean, for any client stuff, Matt, I would start with some do follow brand type stuff first, if it were me. Now, if it were an affiliate site, I might tell you different, you know, because if you mess that up, it's not as big of a deal. You could just start over. But any type of client stuff for me, if it's someone else's business on the line, I'm, I'm being, I'm playing safe and I'm doing, you know, URL brand and then work into the, the money keywords. No, I won't be at Las Vegas, Jason. No, Vegas is too much for me. Those guys are crazy. Now, if I want to rank, for example, a dentist site in Nashville, I want to rank for Google searches of just dentists within Nashville. Will sending anchor text like Dennis Nashville be effective, or should I just send Dennis as the anchor text uh, and trust the Google? Google will get the location, Eric. They'll pick it up from your title and all that, and your own page. Uh, so, I mean, I always do both, anyways. You know, I do location and just like that. All right. What is more powerful, a video embed on a PBN or just a backlink for that same video on the same PBN? I would say a backlink, honestly, Jason. I mean, again, I haven't done a ton of video stuff lately, but from what I've done, I've seen that just a straight link is, is more powerful. Some people might disagree. I know Joe really likes embeds, but... For me, I always see better stuff from uh, linking directly, anchor text. I'm not saying I don't use embeds, but I like links directly better. Initially made a page, uh, my brand, oops, mybrand.com slash city SEO, and then when, and then when made it, a static home page URL displayed is mybrand.com. Is the power of the keyword and the URL lost here? Is the URL changed automatically? Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're pretty much putting this page here. So, I mean, yeah, for the most part, I would say yes. Unless you mean link to that, eh. I don't know, because I don't use pages a ton. If I do, they're not, you know, I make sure, if, if usually if I have a page that's keyword targeted, 
then I leave it as a page. Like I leave the URL like that. So I don't I haven't done that a ton, but I would say in most cases you're going to lose the power of having the keyword like that because I mean you're going to be hitting the, the home page most likely. Do you have any recommended method to get the first client? That would be all cotton, Dan. I don't. I'm not the best person to ask for uh, client stuff. But I mean, one advice I can give, just in general, just get sites up and, and get moving. Do you know if Dan Anton's crowd search is still available? I tried going to his website, but it seems it's no longer available. I don't, Manny. Um, you could ask him in the Facebook group or, or message him. Do you have a clear way for factoring in lost links when placing a valuable valuation on a PBN? For example, uh, plainfan.com has lost about 22% of the links reported in Moz. I don't worry about that, Jason. Um, I just worry about the, the metrics that a PBN has when I get them. And that's pretty much it. I mean, most of my PBNs don't lose a ton of links, from what I've seen. So, I mean, I just don't worry about that. I asked you, I just asked you the question about linking to your web 2.0 nodes versus directly to your money site. Do you have any idea how valuable it is in Google's eyes to link to your web 2.0 if you're a brick and mortar business as opposed to an online business? Does Google favor PBNs to your NAP verify web 2.0 to your local business, or does Google not even care? I would say it doesn't matter, Stephen, in my opinion. I mean, it's all the same. I mean, it just links. You know, it's votes. So I don't think it matters really if it's local or or affiliate or, or, you know, whatever. Is SEO company in my city? A, is SEO company in my city a long keyword to rank for exact according to new update? How often is a long keyword to rank for? How often the exact keyword can be used in content and anchor? Or should I target keyword like my city SEO? No, I don't understand the first part, but how often depends on competition. I mean, I would start it maybe in the title, maybe a couple times in content, depending on what it was. And then, of course, you want to have LSI, like My City SEO, in there as well. I mean, you want to have that regardless. Um, yeah, I mean, if something like, uh, would you say, SEO company in My City, if that's your main keyword, you want to put it in your title most likely, and then maybe once or twice in your content. I mean, that's long enough where you don't want to keep repeating it too much. All right, but, yeah, if it's your main keyword, put it in your title. If it's a secondary keyword, you can maybe put an H1 tag and then put My City SEO in the title. So, I mean, it all depends there. What strategy have you used before for a site that is ranking number five and number six on the first page, but you want to be top three? I have a decent amount of money anchors and just don't want to over-optimize, wondering what else I can do to hit the top three. It all depends on – that's case by case as well, Michael. I mean, if I have a site that is ranking like number five or six on the first page, and I did, you know, maybe ten PBM links over the last six months, and I haven't done one in a couple months, I would still expect those PBNs, even though I haven't linked in a couple months, to boost up, boost it up to the top three. It's just going to take some time, as long as you have the anchor text right. Uh, so I don't know when you did the anchors and, you know, what what your optimization is and all that, but if you're number five or number six on the first page, that's good because Google likes you. Now, if you've done, like, a, a decent amount of links in the last couple months or so, I would say that you're going to move into the top three over the next few months in a lot of cases. So if you've already done a decent amount of money anchors, what I would do if, if you want to, you know, keep being more aggressive is just build links, but make them more branded and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You don't want to risk over optimizing. That's kind of what Google wants people to do, I think, with this slowdown. Uh, so for me, you know, and I wanted to be more aggressive, I'll just build more links with, with branded type anchor types. Or even general, like, you know, this website, click here. Although I usually go for branded more. When linking directly to a money site, does it matter if the first link to an inner page 
Or should be the home page. I mean, yeah, you can do an inner page. And that's, that could be natural, Steve. I mean, I usually do the home page first, but it doesn't mean that you have to do that. But yeah, I mean, that could be, uh, that could be totally normal. All right. Back to my question about outranking a brand in SERPs. I mentioned your e-cigs, how you would do it. Could you give examples on how you get on page one of the SERPs for the brand name? Same way for anything else, Just I mean, it, it's all about optimization. I mean, just any brand that's on the first page is because they, they're, they're optimized for the brand. You know what I mean? So you would just want to build a site and make it be as optimized about the brand as you can. That's what's going to rank you. You know, like, for example, Vaporfeed, they have it in their domain name, they have it in their title. And if we go to look at their links, they're going to have a lot of branded anchor text with the, you know, URL links and Vaporfeed type stuff. That, I mean, that's, it's just same thing for any other site. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to optimize your site for that keyword. All right, so look at their links here. Get off of there. All right, so you know Vapor Fee, they have a whole ton of links with that, their brand, stuff like this, domain name, Vapor Fee, Vapor Fee, Vapor Fee, Vapor Fee, Vapor Fee. I have a video about this on how to rank an EMD. They're kind of doing what I'm showing there. Name a brand. So I mean, they're just well optimized for Vapor Fee. I mean, that's their brand name. You just kind of mock what they're doing. I mean, the more you optimize for that keyword, the more you're going to rank for that keyword. I have a new client, carcraft.ca. He is at the bottom of Google Maps, although he has 17 reviews and a trust of six. The top of the snack pack has no reviews and does not even have a website. Keyword used, ID, car repair for both of them. Any suggestions? Does not appear to have a penalty on the website. I mean, if it were me, it depends on what he has going to his site. That's carcraft.ca. All right, so he has 210 links from 14 domains. So I'm guessing he is ranking for like Kelowna Auto Repair, maybe in the maps. And that's what he's kind of repeating in his anchor text. Let's go check. Actually, you didn't tell me the name of the company. It's not this one because you said the top guy has no reviews. Cologne of something, though, because he has Cologne a lot in his anchor text. But if you let me know what keyword, I can look more into that. But, it, I mean, for me, I'd probably send an exact match keyword for what you're trying to go up in the maps for. That's probably your best option. So if I want to rank for different suburbs or cities, I'm going to create pages using the same website. How about if I want to rank in Sweden? I create a new page or I need a, a new website Thank you. I mean, I've never tried that, Susan, so I'm unsure um, the best way to do that. Likely for me, if I'm in a different country, I'm doing a whole new site. Um, let me see something here. Google Sweden. All right, so Google Sweden is .se. So let's go and look at – hold on, let me see something. I'm just going to go do a test here. I've no, I couldn't name one city in Sweden. All right. So let's go and, well, let's go do this one. So we'll go do a search in Google Sweden for work home plumbers. So it looks like there's dot coms ranking in Sweden. 
So half.coms, half.se's. Let's go. Dot com, dot coms, dot co, dot UK. Now Sweden's kind of a weird country to analyze for. Um, I mean, you probably could do it on the same site. You might want to ask Stephen Floyd how that would work. If it were for me, if it were me, honestly, I'd probably have a different site for each country if I was doing it. But again, I don't have I don't have any experience with going to other countries. So I don't I don't know for sure. I would have to look into that one more. But the good news is it looks like the dot coms rank fine in Sweden. If that's what you're trying to do. Especially for affiliate. All right. According to your latest thoughts on hitting a site with branded, then the exact keyword anchor. You want to rank early on, then waiting to see how your rankings change. If links take a while to kick in, are we waiting potentially one to two months before using the same exact keyword anchor text again if needed? Or do I have that wrong? I would say it depends on the length of the keyword, Eric, and the competitiveness. And also if it's an EMD or not. Um, in a lot of cases, I probably would wait. I think the, the safest thing to say here, Eric, is that yes, I would, I would wait. Um, when it comes to anchor text, I would be more, more, I'd be precautious more than, you know, aggressive when it comes to anchor text. Because once you're over optimized, it, it can be hard to get out of it. So I would, most of the times I would side on, on precaution and not use it. Uh, again, until you need to. All right. Do you have any affiliate marketing experience promoting diet offers in Brazil? I have a Brazilian diet site getting 3,000 visitors a day, but it only makes makes dollar a day. Wondering if Brazil doesn't convert. No, don't have any experience over there, Brendan. Um, my guess is just it's the type of traffic you're sending, or the site's just not optimized. For conversion, uh, so I would look at those two things. You know, what type of so here's here's a good example. So let's go do lose weight fast. Well, I'm trying to think of a good example here. All right, so say if someone that was a, like a, a woman over 40, right, I'll use this example a lot, lands on a page that's more about like younger men losing weight fast um, for like a competition or something, right? Maybe it's like a wrestling competition or something like that. Obviously, if, if you're getting traffic from, and this is an extreme example, if you're ranking for stuff like how to lose weight for women over 40 and they're laying on a page about losing weight, you know, it's more geared towards like younger men, that's not going to convert well. So make sure the conversion's there for the keywords you're ranking for. And on the other hand, you know, a, a keyword like if you're ranking, this is another extreme example, but if you're ranking for something like lose weight, that's a really general term. People could be looking for any type of information on that. They could be looking for, like, you know, how to lose weight for women, how to lose weight for men, how to lose weight but keep muscle, um, how to lose weight without bulking at the same – like, there's so many different categories of this you can be in. So make sure the traffic's not too general uh, for, for for what you have. Make sure you rank for specific keywords, and then make sure the content fits the traffic that you're getting. I don't think it would matter that it's another country. It's more I would worry about the conversion for the keywords you're ranking for. Are manual reviews random, or have you found that there are certain things that could trigger a manual review? To be honest, Steve, I don't. I've never had a manual review, in my opinion. Um, I've had messages saying I had a manual review, but I've been able to track it to a algorithm every time. 
or some type of like algorithm type thing. So to my knowledge, I've never had a manual review, even though they say like, you know, manual penalty or anything like that. I've always been able to track it back to an algorithm. So I'm not totally, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever been hit with one. And I'm skeptical on manual reviews. I, I don't know if they even really do. Them. Or if they do, I think it's very, very, very rare. I'm trying to rank several pages on my websites based on unique long tail keywords. In such case, how should I organize my web for properties? Do I need to have one Weebly account per keyword? Does the content need to be completely unique or spin content? I always use unique content. Um, you can do one Weebly account per keyword, or you can just do a big Weebly and kind of link relevant pages to relevant pages on your site. I mean, whatever you want to do there. There's different ways to do that. Is it okay to link multiple tier two properties on the same PBM post as long as we don't do it often? Yes, absolutely, Michael. I mean, if you think about it, you know, if you're, um, let's go back to vapor fee. So if you're like, you know, if you're, or if you're, excuse me, if you're talking about vapor fee and you say, look, you know, here's vapor fee's website, you know, you're, you're talking about them in an article, you link out to their website, right? Well, here's also their Facebook and their Twitter. So you link out to their Twitter and their Facebook. And that's totally normal. You know, here's the brand, Vapor Fee. Oh, and here's also their Facebook and Twitter page. I mean, it's very common to do, but like you said, I just wouldn't keep doing that over and over and over again. No problem, Jason. You said earlier to use an EMD for launch jacking. If the owner of the affiliate program says this is not allowed, what do you do? I mean, you can get a close EMD. So, for example, I have, um, let's see. So I'm going to give you an example. For B2 SIGs, I had a site that was doing very well, and B2 SIGs contacted me because I had B2 SIGs in the the actual domain, right? So it was like, let's say, let's go to uh, Notepad. So I had something like v 2 sigsreviewcom right? It was doing well, ranking well, made good money. B26 contacted me and said, look, our brand's trademarked. You can't have that in your domain name. I said, okay. I said, what if I switch it to v2sigreview.com? It wasn't this example, but it's something close. And they looked at it and they said, well, v2sig isn't trademarked, so well, technically we can allow that. And that's the type of stuff I do. I was talking about earlier with the 301s. Where you 301 this site to this one here, very similar. So you're going to get very similar rankings when the, when the 301 kicks in. And then you rank, you know, you start pretty much where you were before. In some cases, exactly where you were before. So, I mean, if that's the case, you can do something like this where it's very similar. For a lot of launch tracking stuff, the, their, their brand is going to be trademarked. Like, you can use, in most cases, you can use the name of the product in your domain name. To my knowledge, the only case you can't do that when it's like a trademark term. Like, when they when it's actually a trademark. Like, someone can't just say, to my knowledge... You can't use my product name in your in your domain. They have to have a trademark for you not to be able to do that. That's that's my knowledge of it, at least. That's my experience, I should say. I've never had a problem with non-trademark terms or launch shacking. For optimizing my SEO agency site for different city keywords, should I use one PBN for each and every city SEO page I have on my site? Is that a better strategy or do you have any suggestion? Um, not necessarily. I mean, whatever you need, Shiv. Um, so if you go take a look at um, Cotton Grammar, I mean, he sends a lot of links to his home page. They were SEO related, which themes his site about SEO, right? And then he's got inner pages that are about uh, city SEO. So the theming he did to the home page is going to help any inner page rank for SEO related stuff. Um, so if he had something like Wilmington, Delaware SEO, honestly, for a page like that on his site that's themed so well and so powered up for SEO related stuff. A city like Wilmington, Delaware SEO, which has – Wilmington has like 70,000 people where I live, that might rank naturally with no links to it. 
Now, a city like St. Louis, I believe there's, you know, millions of people in St. Louis, or, you know, there's a lot, it's a lot more competitive. You're probably going to have to send some links to this page, and I know he has. So, I mean, it really depends on the competition and how much, you know, how big your site is, and if you're if you're theming in the same, each page is probably going to need a different amount of links to rank. It depends on competitiveness and how, how well you theme your site. I'm helping a client compete against a company with an EMD for a service business. For example, uh, movingservices.com. My customer has his biz name for his domain. If I change the title on his site to domain.com slash moving services, will he get additional boost from citations, even though those links are usually domain.com? I compare citations linked to movingservices.com. I don't, I don't know what links he has going to domain.com and all that. But I mean, if the, the answer is the simplest way, like without, because I, I, I can't know without seeing it. If you have domain.com versus domain.com slash moving services, I mean, this is going to do better with the same links because I have the keyword in there. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, without seeing this example, it's hard, it's hard to say just looking at this. Hopefully that explanation answers your question. My site keeps bouncing up and down for one of my keywords. I'm not sure what's going on. The keyword is house cleaning for it. Lower down on the website is exactmade.com. I mean, bouncing around is totally normal. I would need to know what you did for the site. I can take a look at it really quick. But, I mean, bouncing around, especially the first few months, is extremely normal, even past a few months. Any Anytime you do any link building, it can be normal. I mean, I'd, I'd really need to know more about that, likely to tell you what's going on. So it's about a October, November, December, January, February. So it's only five months old. So, I mean, it's pretty common you're bouncing around still. It also depends where you're bouncing, uh, like, you know, what page to what page and what kind of keywords and all that type of stuff. When you did your linking, you, you know, it depends on a lot of things. But I mean, the, the easiest thing I can tell you right now is that's totally normal, uh, especially for a newer site. Well, building web 2.0 and social profiles or anything you do to make sure they get indexed, nope. I mean, linking to them is, is, the, is the easiest thing you can do, but, but for the most part, no. I built some citations for a client, but some of them are not indexed. They have not been de-indexed, just didn't get indexed. We're built a few months ago. One of the citations in particular is do file links, so I link to it from PBN to help pass power to the client site. However, will it still pass the power if citation is not indexed? No, not if it's not indexed. I and mean, if Google's not finding it, it's not going to pass power. I'm thinking of having my money site homepage default to brand name SEO. I'm sorry, Steve, in most cases I would say no. All right. I'm thinking of having my money site homepage default to brand name SEO.com slash SEO my city. Is this domain at risk of over optimization as the word SEO is in the URL twice? No. I mean, it puts you more towards over optimization, but absolutely not. I mean, SEO is such a big word. That's not going to over optimize you by itself. You might have to be a little more careful with your anchor text and, and your other areas of over optimization, especially anchor text. But for the most part, I mean, no, that's that, that's not going to optimize you once again. Absolutely not. All right, so we got one more uh, screenshot worth of questions here. Regarding link velocity, with your new thoughts on being a little more conservative with linking, what do you recommend for number of new links sent per week? Does it depend on niche, or are we still safe sending one, two links per week? I mean, there's, there's some sites, honestly, Eric, where I'll send 10 a week, and it's, it's totally fine. It's just if I'm sending them quick, I'm usually being more conservative with my optimization. So I'm not as worried about link velocity as much as I am about optimization. Especially the way we send links. I mean, we're not spamming with GSA anymore directly to the money site and stuff like that. 
So I'm not really worried a ton about link velocity. I mean, how many people are going to do like 100 PBN links in one week? You know, barely anyone. So, I mean, with, with pretty much everyone in our community, I'm not worried about link velocity because no one's really going to do that many links at once with the way the type of linking we do. So I wouldn't worry about that. What I would worry more about, Eric, is just sending too many links as far as optimization goes, like, you know, just not seeing how the site reacts and kind of over-optimizing with your anchor text. That's what I'd be more worried about. A company is CarCraft located in Kelowna. Entered car repair in map search, but Kelowna car repair should work also. I don't know if I'm getting the same results as you, uh, Joanne. You can uh, send me a, a message on Facebook if you want about Joanne. I don't know if I'm getting the same And I don't know the name of that, you know. Well, actually, you said, you said I'm sorry, CarCraft. So, no, they're not in there for that, for me. So, I mean, it might be location-based. When I just do car repair, nothing comes up, obviously, because I'm in Wilmington, Delaware. Um... Yes, yeah, so I'm not getting them in there for that search term, so I'm unsure. I have an EMD, cityseo.com. Despite the fact that I did not mention the keyword a single time on the entire site, it still made it to the first page in a competitive city. Not surprising. The keyword is only in the domain and the meta title. The site does not have much content, so I was thinking of adding more content, plus the keyword, or should I just leave it alone since I'm already ranking? I mean, honestly, if you're already on the first page with no links and all that uh, in a competitive city, I wouldn't change much as that goes. I would just kind of start sending links. It's an EMD, so you can send a lot of branded links and stuff like that to start. No reason to hit keyword and even mess with that, even though, I mean, it probably wouldn't over-optimize. You know, it's just, there's no reason to not be conservative in that case, in my opinion. I would just do some branded links. I built the citations to the home page, but I want to rank an inner page. Can I create this, the exact same citations for an inner page as well? Yes. I mean, if it's a different location, yes. I believe Cotton does that all the time. Do you use any premium hosting, such as WP Engine? No, not really, Jess. Um, well, I use Liquid Web. Uh, they, they got, you know, I pay like $100 a month for one of their hosting things. Um, I use Traffic Planet. They're like 50 bucks a month for 15 sites. Um, and they're pretty quick, too. I like them. Um... But no, I mean, for the most part, not really. I mean, just stuff like that. Last one here, I'm trying to rank a local site. The owner wrote a 50G consumer's guide a while back. I want to use some of it for content. However, copies keep showing it as duplicate content because consumer's guide is hosted publicly on Amazon S3. Would this be okay to still use portions of this text that's unique other than that? It should be, Wendy. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with, with uh, duplicate content because I just don't mess with it. I just always go unique. But as long as it's um, as long as you it's not all duplicated, I think you should be fine. I just don't have a ton of experience with duplicate content because I just tend to steer away from it. All right, all right, guys. Let me make sure we're all taken care of here. Yes, yeah, so Steve is saying regarding the citations, they're not indexed or anything. I can do to get them indexed. I mean, the only thing I will ever do, Steve, is link to them. I mean, that's, that's the thing that, that I found that helps them index the easiest is just linking to them. Other than that, no. All right. All right, guys, so that's the end of this session here. I'm going to wrap up this recording and, of course, get it over to Dave. It should be up within a couple of days. And I will see you guys all next week. Thanks for coming out and asking questions, and I will see you guys next week again. See you later.